The last time you took a sip of a beverage from an aluminum can, you probably never thought twice about where that can came from. Well, chances are it came from here. If you've ever wondered what 220 million aluminum cans looks like, all you have to do is visit the Ball Metal Beverage Container Manufacturing Facility in Golden, Colorado. Ball is by far the market leader in aluminum can manufacturing, in large part because of state-of-the-art facilities like this one that manufacture up to 2,200 aluminum cans every minute. Ball Corporation was founded in 1880 by five brothers, the Ball Brothers. They started out making glass containers for varnishes and paints and soon turned that into home canning jars, which most people know us for. Back in the 1950s and 60s, it made a, a transition into more contemporary packaging, uh, aluminum packaging for, uh, for beverages. Coors Beer was one of the first major customers of that packaging. Uh, Ball became a public company in 1972 after being a privately owned, family owned company for many, many years. That clearly changed some of the emphasis that we have as a company, although manufacturing has always been a keystone of our success. In a lot of ways, Ball is still a family business. It's got a lot of the same family values that it started with, everything from uh, an incredible focus on integrity and passion, um, uh, but also humility that, that helps this place uh, you maintain its strong work ethic and its hunger in the market. 90% of Ball Corporation's sales come from packaging, which include metal and plastic bottles and cans for beverages and foods. It goes without saying that manufacturing plays a vital role in the success of the U.S. economy. In many ways, this country was built upon the products and equipment that we manufactured. We often hear about how much manufacturing has been outsourced overseas, but we often don't hear about how much has been insourced with foreign companies like Toyota and Hyundai opening plants and employing thousands of workers in the U.S. Ball continues to manufacture here in the U.S. We can be competitive with the, the markets here and uh, with the initiatives that we take on for cost savings and so forth, we continue to be very cost effective here in the United States. You can't really make the cans in, say, China, where we do have extensive operations and then ship them all the way back to the U.S. because from a production and cost standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. One thing is certain, in today's global economy, the manufacturing business is more and more competitive, and in order to survive in a global marketplace, U.S. manufacturers like Ball maintain a competitive edge by focusing on customers, maintaining close relationships with suppliers, practicing continuous improvement, focusing on quality, saving on cost through site selection, utilizing the internet, and adopting new production techniques. 20 years ago, this plant was producing, you know, cans at uh, roughly 1,200 to 1,500 cans a minute. Um, now in the Ball Corporation, we have uh, can lines that can produce up to 2,300 cans a minute. Um, and with that, the technology had to advance in all areas of it. Our market's a really interesting mix of being both price-driven and innovation-driven. You know, some of our base core products, things like 12-ounce beverage cans and food cans, you know, they're a commodity product where price is critically important. Other new products um, allow innovation to uh, create a consumer benefit that allows for value above what we would consider commodity pricing. Even though we're a B2B company, we still need to position ourselves as a brand in the minds of consumers, and that's a challenge given that most consumers still think of the home canning jars when they think of ball. But we are working on a number of techniques using Facebook and other social media to let people know that behind the brands they're used to, there's a company like Ball making the packages they use. Let's take a closer look at the production process, which is the creation of finished goods and services using the factors of production. In its simplest form, inputs from the factors of production are used to create outputs in the form of products and services. There are a number of different types of production processes. Ball's aluminum can manufacturing is a perfect example of a continuous process, since cans are manufactured on automated machinery without interruption. Here at the Golden Plant, we have three can lines. Uh, two can lines produce 12 ounce, and one can line produces a 24 ounce. 
First of all, we have the aluminum coming in. The coils come in at about approximately 10,000 pounds. Our first process is what we call a cupper. It's a press that stamps out the can into a cup that looks like almost like a tuna can. And after that, it's conveyed over to what we call a body maker. The body maker is a draw on iron. And when it goes through the body maker, that punch rams it through and stretches, draws that metal out to the length that we need it to be. After it goes through the body maker, it goes into a trimmer. And the trimmer trims that can down to a standard can height. After it comes out of the trimmer, it's conveyed over to a washer. The washer is a six-stage washer. It has a wash station, a pre-wash station, wash station, and two rinse. It comes out of that, goes through the washer, and goes into the dryer. The dryers run at about 250 degrees to dry the cans. It stays in there for a couple minutes, and then it's transferred over to what we call a decorator. The decorator will roll the ink on the can, and then after the ink is put onto the can, it will run through an over varnish that is put on to protect that ink. Once it comes through, out of the decorator oven, it goes into the internal coat. The internal coat is a coating that's put inside the can to keep the beverage from eating through the aluminum. This is then put uh, through another oven, and that is cured, and that comes out as we call a, a straight wall can. The straight wall can is a can that is produced that does not have the neck or the flange on the can. After we have the can come out of the internal bake oven, it will then go over to the necker and flanger area. This is where we neck that reduce the diameter of the can so the lid can set on top of it. We currently test 100% of the cans we call what we call a light tester. And this is a tester that is looking for any kind of leaks in the can. The outside of the can is flooded with a light source and any light that shows through the can, that can will be rejected. And keep in mind, we have to continue to run these cans about 1,500 cans a minute. So it's 100% testing each and every can. After that, the can's completed. We'll convey it over to the palletizer. On a 12 ounce pallet, you will have 8,169 cans. And on a 24 ounce, you will have 4,082 cans. After that, the cans will be taken back to the warehouse and stored. And we have approximately 200 to 220,000 square feet in our warehouse and it's roughly going to hold 220 million cans in there. We stack our cans up four high. We stack four pallets on top of four pallets. Our forklift drivers are capable of handling moving four pallets at one time. In order to survive in today's global economy, manufacturers must continually strive to operate more efficiently and cut costs. Technology plays a big role in the production process, with tools and techniques such as computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, flexible manufacturing, and lean manufacturing playing a key role in allowing manufacturers to stay competitive. Here at the Golden Plant, we believe that uh, to manage a plant, uh, one of the things we have to look at is downtime on a line. Um, we feel that any time we are down on the line, we are losing money. Uh, the, the way we keep our cost down and be competitive is by volume of the product that we can produce. A lot of the machinery that we have comes into our plant sort of in its stock condition and our people, our mechanics and our engineers and other folks will actually work on those machines and change the specs in some cases to make them more efficient and run faster and better for us. Ball's been focused on innovation for a long time. For many years that looked like us trying to figure out how to make packages that were lighter um, and had less metal in them. And at the end of the day, you can only take so much metal out of a can before it doesn't exist anymore. So then we shifted our innovation efforts um, over to some products that consumers might be familiar with. Um, things like the Vented End, the Coors Vented End, you may have seen the commercials of Let's Vent. Um, that's a product that we made in partnership with Coors uh, for the Coors brand and, and that's done very well in the marketplace. There are many other factors that also affect production. The location of the manufacturing facility is one of them. Ball currently has over 30 manufacturing facilities in the U.S. alone. Each one is strategically located in a particular area of the country that is close to both suppliers and customers. Well, our business is kind of unique in that we don't really outsource our production because we are shipping empty containers. So the goal is really to have your customers within a three to 500 mile radius of where you make the containers. You ship them to a filler or your customer empty, they are filled there and then shipped out to retail outlets. So in our case, our facilities, wherever they are, are supplying cans almost always for the local market. Occasionally we ship them further if we have a need on our system to go further. 
The physical layout of the machinery, resources, and people in a manufacturing plant is another factor that can greatly affect the production process. In any manufacturing plant, raw materials are converted to finished goods through many various steps and processes. The closer each of these steps is located to each other, the more efficient the production process is. As we look at the layout of the ball plants, uh, we've currently, in the last few years, really taken a look at that to say how can we utilize you know, getting our product into the warehouse the best, how can we utilize getting our raw materials back to the line efficient and so forth. So currently we are looking at you know, making sure can we use robotics and different things of that nature to transfer things. Uh, when we lay out the lines, particularly in our golden plants now, we are laying out so we can funnel our, warehouse, or our forklift traffic through one main aisle and keep the rest of them open and we can become more efficient that way. Another major cost of production that may not be so obvious is holding inventory. Think about it. It costs a lot to store finished goods that have been manufactured but have not yet been paid for. The longer a company stores finished goods, the more it loses money. That's why most manufacturers have implemented just-in-time inventory control, where both raw materials and finished goods are kept in storage for as short of a time as possible. Now the just-in-time that uh, we currently work with is each supplier may be a little bit different. Depending on what it is, uh, what the raw materials, we work with our suppliers. They may warehouse it here close to the plant or we'll have uh, a secondary supplier set up that if there's a uh, hiccup in it, we can go to a backup supplier. There's many different ways that we use the just-in-time with our vendors depending on uh, their accommodations also. Quality is another important facet of manufacturing. Defective products cost money, so it's easy to understand why so many manufacturers take quality control so seriously. Initiatives like Six Sigma Quality Control, which allows for only 3.4 defects per million, have challenged manufacturers to rethink every step of their production processes to reduce as many errors as possible. Here at this plant, in, in most of our plants, we are not, uh, we do not have a particular ISO 9000 program. With our customers requiring so many different things, we integrate a little bit from all the different quality programs out there, so it's kind of a unique program that we have going within Ball. So we've learned a lot about the manufacturing process. The U.S. will continue to be a major manufacturing force in the global economy, but global competition grows every day. This means that there is more opportunity not only for innovative new products, but also efficient automated manufacturing technologies. So the next time you pick up your cell phone, drive your car to the store, or drink from an aluminum can, just imagine what goes into making it and what the future holds in store for these products. Well, we have done a number of things for many decades at Ball. We didn't call it sustainability. We called it other things. Recycling is a big part of what we do. So is lightweighting, which is using less material in our containers, whether it's plastic or metal. Uh, we work with local uh, communities and municipalities to create recycling programs to help communities recycle because in our opinion one of the most important things we can do is get our products back. It saves energy, it saves raw materials, and it's really more efficient for the entire life cycle analysis system. As you're thinking about what company to work for, what career to pursue, I think the most important thing is to find something that you, f you feel is really significant. You know, at Ball, we're using products and creating products that touch people's lives in a very important way every day. And we find a lot of significance in that. That's what you know, drives us to, to do better and do more every day.